I told a lie. I do have something handmade and knitted that's hanging in my wardrobe. I didn't realise I had it, but I thought I'd show you today at the beginning of this video. Hello everybody, my name is Rebecca and my channel is Hedro Stitching. I would just like to say a big thank you to everybody who watched my channel in the recent two videos I uploaded. I do apologise in my craft room tour, my jeans zip was broken. They're my favourite pair of page jeans and I was desperate to keep them on that day. So sorry you got to see my zip. Today is Saturday the 11th of March 2023 and it's drizzly here in Cornwall. They call it the Cornish Mizzle and I'm not surprised. Okay, what I'm wearing, this is a very old jacket knitted in bulky yarn. I have looked through my ton of knitting books to find the pattern for anybody who would really want to knit it. It's um, a cropped jacket with cable and it's short at the back with these big buttons and this lovely wrap around collar. I have worn it quite a few times. Um, the only thing I did make were the sleeves a little too long. Um, I do like my sleeves to come over my uh, knuckles on my hand but these actually came more. So when I put it on today I realised I had to lift it up and there's a lot more bulk here in the arms. So let me show you the design. This was a design back from Kim Hargreaves and it's in her cherished knitting book. It's called Ember, the Ember Jacket. I had a few comments from viewers in my last knitting video that they couldn't see properly the colours of the wool and so this is why I'm hiding my face. I was trying out a new setup and using a camera that is new to me so um, it's all trial and error isn't it and it's not a TV show here. <laughs> But thank you for your comments and I endeavour to work a little bit harder so you can see things clearly. So this was the jacket I had to show you. I have knitted so much um, all throughout my life. My best friend Annie, hi Annie, I don't think she watches my videos, remembers me at university. I was the girl with the really long blonde hair, a huge knitted chunky jacket or jumper which went below the, um, to the, below the hips, um, skinny little legs in leggings and a pair of Doc Martin boots. And uh, she can just remember me with all these different knitted jumpers um, that were great for keeping warm. Okay, I'll take this off a second. I have to mind my microphone. Um, I've also got on, this is my husband's waistcoat that I knitted him a good few many years ago. It's a four ply and I think it's um, a Shetland wool type four ply. I'm not too sure. It's quite an old four ply, but it's got this lovely colour for men down at the bottom, some mustard and some red. I think it's always nice for men to wear colour and not black or grey. Having said that, I've just finished his hoodie, which is grey. But anyway, it involves some colour work and some colour work at the top here. And I have a million um, knitting patterns. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight of these um, A4 folders full of knitting patterns. These are ones that I've downloaded and printed off or people have given me or are separates that you could, you could purchase years ago. And this is my men's volume. Um, it's not labelled, so I had to pull out four before I could actually find it. So perhaps I should get a little bit more organised and label them up. And I managed to find the pattern for this um, tank top, I suppose you would call it, waistcoat. And it's um, called a Fair Isle Waistcoat by somebody called Wendy Baker. And it's in a book called Classic Knits for Men, which I don't have, but I do have the, um, the pattern. 
this is the quite old. It's um, it was published. Mm, doesn't give a date. Not being very helpful, am I? Um, Classic Knits for Men. I think it's a Rowan design by Wendy Baker. So if you're interested in um, getting your chap to wear a button-down waistcoat, um, I'm going to keep this on because I'll keep warm, even though you can hear the flickering of the fire downstairs. Um, we just lit our wood burner. Um, also, I thought I would show you, not finished object, um, for me, but another finished object I made my husband, and it is this Fair Isle, whoop, another Fair Isle waistcoat. He doesn't like to get too hot during the day or when he's at work, so um, this is a sleeveless Shetland two ply jumper weight. jumper for him. It's got the gorgeous bright yellow uh, royal blue colours here, this lovely dark red, some dark teal and then on the rib you've got the colours again here. This is a really really old pattern, the walls are really old so I'm not sure if you can still get the same colours, I'm sure you would be able to. Um, one lady did leave a message on my previous video and asked me um, what the difference was between two ply um, jumper weight and Aaron. Um, she wasn't um, familiar with those terms and so I did direct her to a really brilliant video I've watched recent, recently and um, about someone talking about the different sorts of yarns that Jameson and Smith actually produce. I will link that um, video down below because it is in the comments of my last video. Um, so if you are interested in finding out more about Shetland wool, um, then pop over to their website and have a, a look at the YouTube channel, um, which I'll link down below. I thought um, I would show you, I did mention in my last video um, that my daughter had started knitting again and it sort of spurred me on again to pick up some of my old whips and also get back into my knitting. I've always um, knitted and I hadn't for a good while so I was obviously concentrating on my sampler stitches. So um, I thought I would show you what she um, inspired me to take up knitting with. Again, so she used this green colour and Wool in the Gang yarn. And she made, it was a kit that I bought her for Christmas and she made this in four days. She's not sewn it up yet, but it's the most gorgeous cropped sweater. She sewed it with, uh, the body is an all-in-one with the neckline and then she had to pick up stitches for the sleeves. And then they've got like a balloon cuff finish to them on the ends of the arms. Um, and I think for a beginner, sweater knitter, this is an ideal gift. I'm not sure if it's still on their website, Wool in the Gang. I'll link their main website below, but it's so soft. And this wool is, um, let me have a look. It's a chunky, super chunky. It does say uh, eight millimeter US 11 needle. And it doesn't say if it's, I would imagine this is superwash wool, because it feels like it's been treated superwash. But being a, t uh, a young adult, she can throw it in the washing machine if she wants to. And, um, but it's so soft, it's absolutely gorgeous. So this was the sweater she made and she was knitting over Christmas. This was the wool. And it encouraged me to get my knitting back out again. Okay, a little while ago, um, 
my husband asked me if I could make him a new tea cosy for our teapot and he had a Union Jack one which had seen better days. I mean it looked as if the moths had been to tea really. So I picked out this lovely book which is again Jameson and Smith, Knit for Scotland, oh, real knit, knit Real Shetland. Sometimes I talk and I really don't know what I'm saying. And um, on page 34 is the Osaka Tea Cozy. This is a design by, sorry, I won't get this name right, Masami Yokoyama, Japanese designer. I picked my own colours because obviously he didn't want a pink tea cosy and this is the finished object finished item i put some bright blue in it just to make the colors pop a little bit more it's a steak each side of the opening which i have steaked but i need to sew sew the steak in I did crochet along the edge of the steak and then when I cut the steak I just left the ends and they haven't unraveled or anything so if you do that crochet over the end it um, seals those steaks so I need to just fold that over and whip stitch it down it's a very quick design. I'll show you the inside so you can see my colour work. I haven't done colour I hadn't done colour work for a good many years before I this was my first project back and it's a lovely um it actually you could wear it as a hat. <laughs> the hat patterns are very similar. So that's that one. So the Osaka Tea Cozy, if you are a tea drinker and you used teapot instead of tea bags, that's a cool pattern to use. Um, moving on, this is my Fair Isle Tam, Scatness Tam, that I showed you last time. I haven't got very far, I'm just um, doing the shaping along the top, but what I wanted to show you was, da da I bought myself a Twizzler. Twizzler, twister, whatever you want to call it. Um, you you thread your balls onto this uh, time shape, and you can do your colour work. You can hang it on your wrist. You can hang it from a side chair arm, and I think the reason why I haven't finished this one is because. I was getting my two colours twisted a lot and this makes it a lot easier. I do do a form of continental knitting when I'm doing colour work um, by holding one um, thread, one colour thread in one finger and the other colour thread on the other hand finger. Um, so I do find that quite fast but I think I didn't want my balls to go over, all over the floor so I um, purchased one of these and I'll link below the shop that I got it from in the UK. I'm sure they're available you know, in most decent um, yarn stores. So that was just what I wanted to show you on that little hat which will soon be done. Okay, I was thinking about my 2023 plans and I've got a lot of patterns here that I'll just whip through slowly because they're all popular patterns that everybody's done um, on the internet. And um, I thought I would, I thought I was having a think about what else um, I have on my list of things to do that I haven't done. So one of them is the crochet blanket and I've got a pattern for that here 
because somebody asked me to show you a pattern for that so I've got that but also I was thinking I'd really like to improve my lace knitting I haven't done an awful lot but um, if you don't do it you never learn how to do it do you so and I'm at that age where I retire from work in about 18 months to two years and um, I can't wait <laughs> so I'll have more time to do all my crafts that you see around me and I thought I would try out some uh, lace knitting I have a huge library of books and I pulled out this absolute stunner of a book and it's printed and published by the Shetland Times Limited and they're in Lerwick in Shetland and it's this book Uh, this is by Sharon Miller, who was an infant teacher in the Midland area for nine years and she knitted for her own family and babies and had a strong desire in lace knitting. It's quite a thick book. I bought this book for £30 and this was about 10, 15 years ago perhaps, um, but it has some lovely photographs in it of people knitting their Shetland lace and I absolutely adore any old photographs of people showing how they how years gone by they used to do things and it shows a lot of lace designs how to follow them and I think in the back it's got booties and uh, christening gowns and um, all sorts of stoles and things that you can knit patterns I mean. Um, my family um, on my mother's side, my maternal family, um, were from Aberdeen so and going back in history were crofters from the Northern Isles so um, it's in my roots. It's probably why I have such a strong interest in it and a super book also by the same lady is called Heirlooms Knitting Shetland Hap Shawls. This is a much slimmer book and again it, I think I bought this in November 2006. It looks like she, had, oh yes, yeah, she's actually signed it for me. Um, and she was a little mother and baby with their hat shawls on. So I pulled out this these books and was having a look through them and um, I'm going to pick, I will probably pick a um, reasonably simple um, design. I think I'm going to do um, just a straight scarf with the uh, either the cat's paw design or the ladder design on it. Um, let me just show you this lovely photograph of this lady. Sometimes I think um, perhaps knitters lived in this property. Um, it's an old farmhouse that we bought when it was falling down and have spent a lot of um, time and capital in um, getting it back to a habitable condition and I do wonder if um, people knitted um, while they were living here. So um, to be able to do this piece of lace I bought just one skein to practice with of the Jameson's Ecru Waistlate. Waistlate? Lace weight. What is wrong with me today? I have no idea. And um, a size 6 circular needle practice my lace patterns. So next video I'll show you how I'm getting on with my lace scarf that I'm just going to make up from a pattern from using a pattern from this book. So that's what I've got on my current agenda. Um, moving over to my son's top that I showed you last video. I've actually printed off a copy of the top pattern lighthouse vest which is a drops design and let's see this is the bottom I hope it 
blocks a lot bigger than it is. Although I've knitted the size that is correct for him, um, it does feel like it's coming up a little on the small side. So I've um, this is one. This is the back from so cast off, not cast off for the shoulders, and it's going to be quite a snug fit but I'm sure that will keep him warm and he can have it as a layer. Uh, so that's as far as I've got with his design and I'm sure uh, this Swarbles wool is quite um, not coarse but hard wearing because obviously they're sheep that weren't bred for their wool. Um, I think the staples of the wool are, qu have qu are quite long and um, I'm sure it will block very nicely. So that's um, my son's sweater. Um, I bought the other day um, some Knitting for Olive silk mohair and this colour is putty and what I wanted this for was to do a petite knit um, pick top for myself and I had this Shetland wool that I unwound from a previous design, but it doesn't really go. What I need is cream. This is a putty colour. And I also had in my stash um, about seven or eight balls of this, which is, I think this is um, silk. It's a four-ply four sport weight and it's silk. Four ply sport, scrumptious, 45% silk, 55% superwash merino in the colour oyster. And I thought maybe that colour would go together, but I'm not keen. This has got too much pink in it, and I think cream would go much better with those two. So they're um, just ones I've been experimenting with. I did um, treat myself to one ball of this beautiful colour wool and this is Cardiff Cashmere and the Cashmere Classic in the colour in the colour 677. It hasn't got an actual named colour. And on a three and a half needle, I wonder if you can guess what design this is. I started this last night and this cashmere is just so soft. I started the petite knit Sophie scarf. This is going to be super quick. I started this late last night um, and it's just, oh my goodness, it's so soft. And um, Cashmere. So that was my petite knit. And then I um, printed off a couple of designs. I'm hopping backwards and forwards today. The um, cotton I showed in my previous video and said I was going to start a hexagon blanket with, I um, didn't have an actual pattern for it. And somebody on the web did ask me what pattern I was going to use. And all I could do was link to a, um, a website for learning how to um, crochet hexagons but going through all my um, folders I did find a hexagon pattern and this was um, something I had printed off gosh 2014 so a good while ago and it's um, by the amazing Attic 24 crochet designer and she has put up a crochet design blanket for different colour weight. I'm just going to use the same colour for the whole crochet, uh, crochet design. But there's another uh, written pattern with good um, photographs if you want to use that one. So I just thought I would show that one. And then I've just got a couple of designs. I know them. So this one is the Oslo hat. I did see, and I can't put my finger on it now, I did see, I think it was somebody's podcast where she had made this beautiful pink, bright pink, like lipstick pink 
um, Oslo hat with two yarns held together. I think it was a knitting for olive merino and the silk mohair and I went on the site that sells knitting for olive over here in the UK and they didn't have that lipstick pink so maybe that was a product that they don't make anymore, the colour they don't make anymore. Um, but this hat she had was absolutely gorgeous and I think I need a little bit more colour in my life and in my knitting so um, I'm going to see if I can find a lipstick pink um, thin merino so I can make myself the Oslo hat which is one reason why I printed it off. The other one is the Stockholm hat. So I've been going through my um, stash to see what I've got. I just want some really quick fast projects and the weather is still pretty miserable here at the moment so even though spring is coming it's not here yet and then I printed off the no frills sweater the novice sweater and I also had in my folder the um, what one's this? The Anchor Summer shirt, so I'm going to make that one as well. And I have a confession to make. I am probably one of the only people who does a knitting podcast who has never knitted a ranunculus. Can you believe that? So I printed off the pattern. I've got a whole load of uh, fabric I can use yarn I can use. I think I fancied the lace weight um, so I'm going to have a read of this today. I'm going to put aside some of my stash and get on with doing a ranunculus sweater and perhaps I'll do a video just on the ranunculus, how I found it as um, someone who's never knit it before. I've heard a lot about it, I've seen a lot of people wearing theirs um, I've seen all the projects on the Ravelry page and perhaps 2023 is my year for knitting a ranunculus. Um, that's all I have for today. I thought I would do a video. I had such a lovely response and some lovely comments from people who watched my last video. I'm really thrilled to bits that people want to come on here and listen to me gab on about my hobbies. Um, I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel. I know it's a very generic sort of thing like subscribe, hit the notification bell. I have never said those words all three of them in one row before. My camera cut out just as I was about to say if you want to subscribe to my channel please do. Um, I'm hoping that these chats I have um, connect with you and let me just also tell you that my new logo has been created and I'll put a picture in here by a fantastic artist. Her name's Isha and she lives in Bangladesh and she's absolutely fabulous. I gave her the idea that I had and she just came up with some. And Isha, if you're watching, thank you so much, my lovely girl. You're beautiful and I hope I can work with you again in the future and perhaps you get a little bit of work or commission work through me showing my logo on here today. Anyway, everybody have a brilliant weekend and I'll catch up with you again later. Thank you, bye-bye.